I think maps are one of those incredible things that we look around us as we walk around the streets or drive through the countryside and we see the physical shape of the world we're in and suddenly we find all of that reproduced on a two-dimensional flat piece of paper or, or on a handheld screen or whatever and it does hold a tremendous fascination for us to see where we are in the world where we're going to where we've come from and to see what uh, how that is represented in a two-dimensional way I grew up in Britain in the 1960s and 70s when there was amazing changes taking place in that country. The wonderful railway network that we used to have had suddenly been cut back by over a third in the beaching acts in the early 60s. And so all over Britain there were these remnants of this uh, fantastic infrastructure which my dad used to take me wandering along old track beds of railways and broken down stations. And I think that had an incredibly big effect on me when I was a kid. Thinking about trains thundering past on railways that were then disintegrated and dismantled. And it just kind of welded me to the idea of being fascinated by transport and railways and local areas and geography and mapping, I think. I got the New York subway map and then I went to Paris on a school day trip and I got a copy of the Paris metro map and I couldn't help but compare them with the famous London underground tube map and that's kind of started a collection which I kind of built up as a boy and then carried on collecting those maps as I got a bit older. I kept this little collection going and people used to come up to me before the days of the internet and say well Mark we know you've got a copy of the Moscow metro map we're going over there could we possibly borrow it from you and these were some of my prized collections and I kept thinking stuff like like, well, why isn't there a book of all these things? Yeah, I feel it's uh, time travel, almost, really. When you're looking at something, I'm looking at one now from Japan, which was from 1928, which is a beautifully detailed uh, ge geographic map of all the mountain ranges and shows the way that the railways are weaved in and out through tunnels and across bridges of, of waterways. And these things were like hand-painted, obviously, originally. And for me, I think that they, they do offer a, a, a glimpse of the past and also of the future when you look at... Uh, there's a couple of uh, maps in the book about how the US might look in 2050 when they built all the high-speed railway lines. Let's hope that they arrive. And it does take you on a, on a, on a kind of a, a geographic time uh, chronological journey of where we started from and where we ended up now. <laughs> A lot of us nowadays, we live in this interconnected world and we have this kind of wanderlust. We're fascinated by things like Google Earth and Google Maps and we want to dive in and see other parts of the world, even if we can't afford to visit it or can't actually go there. We are absolutely fascinated by the way other places look and the way other people live their lives. And I think that's one of the great fascinations of, of my books, if you don't mind me saying, is that people do love maps and they love picking up them and poring over them and going, oh yeah, I've been there. Oh look, that's amazing, I would love to go there. I think that's part of the joy and the fascination of picking up any book about maps really, is that it transports you to another world. Mm -hmm.